How does your theory of mood matters explain the height of skyscrapers? Oh, that's another fun, fun uh, case. Um, if you think about what the social mood actually means, it means how do people feel about the future? And if people feel optimistic about the future, then often, especially in small countries, they want to build some kind of a monument to that optimism. They're optimistic about the future. We want to tell the world and show the world how optimistic we are. And one way that they tend to do that is to try and build the world's tallest buildings. And you saw it in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, when the Petronas Towers were built to become the world's tallest building. Then it was overtaken by Taipei 101 in Taiwan. And, and the most uh, current example is in the um, um, Middle East, in Dubai, where now Burj Dubai is the world's tallest building. But the interesting feature about uh, each of those cases, if you look at the local financial market index, which I'll take as the meter of mood in that country, you see that when the index is soaring up into the stratosphere, then they start the construction for the world's tallest building. And, but of course, skyscrapers don't get built overnight. It takes usually a few years, especially if you're going to build the world's tallest skyscraper. And if you look at where the financial market, the mood is by the time that the building is finished, it's down in the cellar. Uh, it's already peaked, and by the time uh, the building is topped out and open for business, uh, the financial market index, namely the social mood, is already uh, lower than when it began construction. So the message that comes from this is, uh, in my view, if you're, if you're an investor or a speculator, when you see some country announce they're going to build the world's tallest skyscraper, and when they actually start construction, Shortly after that is a good time to start getting bearish on the financial markets in that country. So you're drawing a direct correlation between financial indices and mood. Is it safe to say that money buys happiness? Uh, it's very unsafe, I think, to say that. Although I saw a story in the internet <clears throat> just this morning on that very topic, and uh, the, the message of the story seemed to be not so much that money buys happiness, but it can buy happiness depending on how you spend the money. And if you spend the money on things that, first of all, you can anticipate, like taking a nice trip around the world or some uh, such thing like that, uh, and that you can then have some happy memories to discuss afterward, then the money spent in that area can buy some measure of happiness. But if you spend the money instead to just buy a car or a new uh, sofa a new, in, in your living room, that's not the kind of spending that uh, is going to buy you happiness. So that, that's the, the message. The answer to the question is, it depends. <laughs> Good answer.